Dazeef, I'm calling you out. I even put on the, <laughs> the MBT choker to show you that I'm serious. Please don't make fun of me for this comments. I'm making a call out video because I disagreed with someone's assessment of legacy support. I'm clearly pretty fragile. I'm here to tell you that your video about the sacred beasts was deeply insulting and pretty much you're pretty much 100% correct. Like, he's just absolutely spot-on correct when he says that Skyfire isn't enough to facilitate a Haemon deck, and that Awakening setups are not consistent. And by the way, if you send me your consistent Awakening setup, I will laugh at you. You are going to lose to Gamma. 100%. Anyway, while I do agree with the Zeef that the archetype is at its best when it's an engine in a more competent deck like Eldlich, where I disagree is his claim that there does not exist a native archetype that is powerful enough to compete with the metagame. I think a lot of people are overlooking a lot of really strong generic extra deck options that make this a fantastic deck to take to a local. I don't get much of a chance to play Paper Yu-Gi-Oh anymore ever since... Coronavirus. But I take this to remote dual locals when I have the opportunity to play in them, and I do pretty well. The most recent one, for example, I played against Weather Painters, invoked Dogmatica Eldlich and Dragonlink, to which I dropped zero games, and then I bricked twice in finals. But 3-1 is a respectable enough record that I did want to put this out there. Oh, and by the way, quick shout out to Tracy Cakes. I will link her information below for overnighting me a Lingcross after the company I purchased one from sent me a Lingcaribo instead. They're kind of the same. But seriously, Tracy, you're the best. Do follow her on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. She's hilarious. So, without further ado, let me show you what I'm playing. So, before we get into the combos, I'll just give you a quick overview of the deck. First, the Sacred Beast stuff. We're playing three copies of Dark Beckoning Beast. This is far and away the best monster in the deck. Not only does it search a Sacred Beast or Sacred Beast adjacent card, it also gives you a double summon for fiends with zero attack. If you are looking to play against this deck, here's where you spend your impermanence. Next, we're on three copies of Chaos Summoning Beast. This might be a little too many. The reason I'm playing three of this card over two or even one if I were just splashing the engine is because it's not the worst thing in the world to draw. Routinely opening of the spirit gates will get ashed and if it remains on field you can normal a chaos summoning beast to go from chaos summoning beast into link Rebo, then bring back the chaos summoning beast with opening the spirit gates effect and then just make verte anaconda that way. What's more if you draw it it means that your dark beckoning beast can now get something else. Speaking of something else we're on three copies of dark summoning beast. This card never shows up in the splashed versions of this engine uh, but it's absolutely fantastic if you are actually trying to make the sacred beasts. Because opening the spirit gates doesn't target in the graveyard, you can pitch this card as long as you have another valid target, then summon back Dark Summoning Beast. It's a fantastic way to get a couple of sacred beasts, one on your hand and one on the field on the first turn. After that is our sacred beast of choice. We are on three Haemon because of Cerulean Skyfire, uh, also because Yuria is absolute garbage. And uh, then we are also on three special summonable extenders. This is Jester Confit. And three special summonable extenders that also draw you cards. Three Magician's Souls. Uh, rip in the chat to the budget-minded among us, but these cards are absolutely necessary for the combos that I'll showcase in a little bit. Uh, plus, Magician's Souls gives you a bit of consistency in case you, I don't know, draw extra copies of Opening of the Spirit Gates or something like that. Uh, what's more, in best-case scenarios, you can send a continuous spell, then add it back with the third Third effect of opening of the spirit gates, something that will absolutely make your opponent say, oh my god, why didn't I read this? Next we've got uh, the hand traps. I'm only playing six monsters, three Ash Blossom, and three Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Important for Proxy F Magician that you are playing hand traps with less than a thousand attack, so they can be used to facilitate the end steps of your combo at the point when they are no longer needed. And finally, uh, our Garnets for Red Eyes Fusion. I'm playing two Dark Magician because we are also playing Magician Souls, and I don't want to only have to use one of them over the course of the turn. As far as spells, big surprise, we are playing three Opening of the Spirit Gates. Important that you are familiar with all three of this card's effects. On activation, it gets a Sacred Beast or a Sacred Beast adjacent card. Uh, you are able to discard a card from your hand to the graveyard in order to special summon from your graveyard a Fiend with zero attack. And, most importantly, if you control a level 10 monster, you can add a continuous spell from your graveyard back into your hand. After that, we're playing three Allure of Darkness. I will completely cop to this. Um, two weeks ago, this was three Called by the Grave. But the deck does need draw, and 
in the absence of triple called, I feel pretty comfortable playing a draw spell in its place. Uh, next is the card we will be binning off Curious and then adding to our hand, Cerulean Skyfire. This card is miserable if you draw it, and for that reason, I elected to only play a single copy to be added at best case combos. Fallen Paradise, you could conceivably bump this up to two because your first one is likely going to be destroyed by a Nightmare Phoenix or something. This card is fantastic. It turns all of your Sacred Beasts into Black Luster Soldier, the Link Boss. And finally, Called by the Grave. I know it's only a one, but you probably do have to play it. We've also got our Red Eyes Fusion for obvious reasons. For traps, all we're playing is three Infinite Impermanents. Extra deck space in this deck is extremely tight. There was an earlier build of this that experimented with Dogmatica stuff, but I shelved it because realistically you just don't have the space to play all the stuff you want. First, the cards that get us to Curious, Relinquished Anima, Link Haribo, and Curious itself. After that, the follow-up play, Link Cross, and the follow-up to the follow-up, Proxy F Magician, and the follow-up to the follow-up to the follow-up, Verde Plane Verte Anaconda. Now, realistically, this is almost always going to be your backup line. Your opponent's going to interact with one of the things you do, and you'll have enough monsters on the field to make Verte Anaconda into Dragoon. But, in uninterrupted scenarios, you still can finish with the big green boy. After that, we're playing two Salamangrate Almirage. You can cut one of these if you want, but I would not recommend it. This is the only way you can get Dark Beckoning Beast from your field into the graveyard, because it's level 2, and routinely, if your opponent interrupts you, you'll have to do so in order to facilitate a Verte and Akana setup turn one. In turns two and three, you'll need this card to go into Nightmares Unicorn and Phoenix and resolve simplified board states. After that is Blackluster Soldier, Soldier of Chaos. Uh, many decks just absolutely cannot out this card. It doesn't rely on something like Fallen Paradise to get its protection and therefore is really, really hard to kill. As a result, don't be afraid of just naturally going into this using a Sacred Beast and turning off your opponent's entire deck. We're also playing a Cerberus, though realistically this comes up uh, very, very seldom. For fusions, we're playing one First of the Dragons. You'll see where this comes in in a combo in a moment. One Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, the boy, and one Elder Entity in Tiss for the remaining Dogmatica players who didn't get the memo that the deck is only okay. So with that, let's check out some combos. Let's start with what might be considered a best case scenario in terms of this deck. A Dark Beckoning Beast or a card to find it, an extender in the form of Jester Confit or Magician Souls, a way to find or search Haemon, a card to discard for opening of the Spirit Gates, and a card to summon with Proxy F Magician. Now I know this looks like a five card combo, I promise you it is not. It's better to conceptualize this in the terms you would think of Dragon Link. They're five cards, yes, their whole hand will be used most likely, but you have a ton of opportunities to find these individual pieces over the course of the combo via draws. It is very unlikely you will fail to find it because the cards you can use are so mutable, and most importantly, it sets up a board state that it's very, very hard for your opponent to interact with. So, let's go through the combo proper. First, unsurprisingly, we'll normal summon a copy of Dark Beckoning Beast. We can activate Dark Beckoning Beast effect to search an opening of the Spirit Gates. From here, we will get a Chaos Summoning Beast from our deck to our hand, and then normal summon it. If you have a Extender, this is the time to use it. Jester Confit comes down, and we can use Chaos Summoning Beast as material to make a Link Haribo. Now, if we've got the Haemon in the hand, the next thing we want to do is discard any random card. Here, we'll use Called by the Grave to bring back this Chaos Summoning Beast. Then we will activate the effect of Chaos Summoning Beast, tributing itself so you can summon a Haemon. Afterwards, at any point in the combo, we can banish the Chaos Summoning Beast from the graveyard in order to search from our deck to our hand a copy of Fallen Paradise. Uh, this will be important for protecting our Haemon and drawing cards, which could potentially enable the Proxy Magician. For the time being, let's just assume we already have the target. Now you'll notice we have a Spellcaster, a Fiend, and a Cybers on our side of the field, and given that they're all dark, we can send all three of these to the graveyard in order to summon from our extra deck a copy of Curious. We'll activate the effect of Curious, sending from our deck to our graveyard a copy of Cerulean Sky. Fire. This is our target that we will be adding back with opening momentarily, but first we have to resolve the second effect of Curious, and this is very frustrating. If you mill Red Eyes Fusion or Red Eyes Black Dragon from the remainder of your deck, it is going to drastically decrease the amount of your follow-up play, so consider if you even want to go this deep into the combo when you're doing it. For the purposes of this combo, let's just pretend we didn't find them. We'll activate opening the Spirit Gates to put the Skyfire back into our hand, at which point we will activate it. Now our opponent isn't going to be able to Infinite Impermanence for the remainder. We'll send this Curious off to the graveyard for a copy of Linkross. We'll activate Linkross's effect for three tokens. That's right, the full value of the Curious. Fantastic that we have the ability to do this. Next, we'll activate the graveyard effect of Link Rebo, tributing one of these tokens to the graveyard so that we can summon him back. 
Afterwards, we're going to link summon using Link Haribo and Link Cross a copy of Proxy F Magician. Now, Proxy F Magician actually has two effects. The first of it, which we will be using now, is to fusion summon using cards you control. We'll send these two tokens to the graveyard for a first of the dragons. The second is if a card is fusion summoned to a link point, you can summon from your hand a monster with less than a thousand attack. We'll just do that now. And then, of course, these two can go off to the graveyard in order to facilitate a Predaplant, Verte, Anaconda, whose effect we will activate to summon a Dark Dragoon. We can activate Fallen Paradise to draw a couple of cards, so we will have Fuel for the Dragoon, and on board we have a monster that is very, very difficult to out, a monster that is almost as hard to out and also represents an Omni Negate, a Spell and Trap Negate, and any additional cards we draw off the Fallen Paradise, including Hand Traps. More realistically, however, either something will be negated, or you'll draw very poorly. I mean, we're playing about six Garnets, there's pretty much a 0% chance we don't find one of them. That said, even something as simple as the resolution of a Dark Beckoning Beast can get you off to the races. Let me show you. Let's say, for the sake of argument, this is either the only good card you draw, or the only thing that's allowed to resolve. We can still get stuff done. We'll go for a copy of Opening of the Spirit Gates, and now the lines deviate based on what's in your hand. Let's say, for example, we've got a copy of Haymon. Well, we can search a Chaos Summoning Beast, uh, we can link it off to the graveyard, for a Link Haribo. We can activate the effect of opening of the Spirit Gates, pitching a card to bring back the Chaos Summoning, and then we can make both a Haymon using the effect of Chaos Summoning Beast to tribute itself off the graveyard, considering we already have one in the hand, as well as a Predaplant Verte Anaconda into a Dragoon, provided we haven't drawn the Red Eyes Fusion. From here, you can also search a Fallen Paradise. You'll have two monsters that are almost impossible to get rid of, and your opponent will have to play through at least one negate. Of course, that isn't all you could do. If you start with a Dark Beckoning Beast into an Opening of the Spirit Gates, you could also get a Chaos Summoning Beast and send it to the graveyard for a Link Haribo. Use the effect of Opening of the Spirit Gates, pitching a card to bring back the Chaos Summoning Beast, and then go into a copy of Relinquished Anima. From here, you can send the Anima, a Spellcaster, the Link Haribo, a Cyburst, and the Dark Beckoning Beast, a Fiend, to the graveyard to summon Curious, and dig further for combo pieces. If you want to play exclusively the Sacred Beast version of the hand, let's say you have a Cerulean Skyfire in your opener, you can normal Dark Beckoning Beast, getting a copy of Dark Summoning Beast, before sending this card to the graveyard for a copy of Salaman Great Almirage. From here you can activate opening, pitching a copy of Dark Summoning Beast, and because it doesn't target, you can then bring back the Dark Summoning Beast and activate its effect to summon a Haemon from deck. Next, you can activate Dark Summoning Beast to get a second Haemon to hand, and provided you've opened something like Cerulean Skyfire or Fallen Paradise, you probably have gas from this position. This deck is extremely malleable, its lines are very interesting and hand-dependent, and I really, really advise you to give it a shot instead of writing it off.